What's going on guys, it's Suk and I am back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. Now in today's video, I'll be bringing you my full and in-depth review of the 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro. I do also want to thank you guys for the growth that we've seen on the channel as of late. And as always, we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers. And if you are new around here, then be sure to subscribe clicking the bell icon to be notified of when I upload any new videos. The specification for the machine that I am reviewing in this video will also be left down below in the description section. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So let's start by talking about what actually comes included with this MacBook Pro. Included is a 61 watt USB-C charger, which will get the MacBook to a complete charge from zero to 100% in under two and a half hours. Also battery life on this MacBook on average is closer to around eight hours with a mix of light photo editing, web browsing, video streaming, and the odd document production. So these MacBook Pro models start off with a 1.4 gigahertz quad core Intel i5 processor, which is the same processor found in the previous model from 2019, meaning it's also capable of the same turbo boost speed of up to 3.9 gigahertz. Though you will almost never hit those speeds for a sustained amount of time, but the short burst does great stuff when you are pushing the machine. I've uploaded a video in which I ran a number of different benchmarking tests on this MacBook Pro. These were CPU, GPU, RAM and storage based tests. I also tested how long it would take this machine to export both Full HD and 4K video footage. If you'd like to see that, then be sure to click the card in the top right corner of the video. As standard, you still get 8GB of LPDDR3 RAM, which runs at a speed of 2133MHz, which no surprises here, is the exact same as the one found in the previous model. As it's running the same processor, you will also find the integrated graphics to be the same. With this particular model, you get the Intel Iris Plus 645 graphics. Yes, we still do not have a dedicated graphics option for the 13 inch models. And if you'd still like a MacBook with the option of dedicated graphics, then your only option is to spend a thousand pounds more on top of the 1300 that you already spent to opt for the 16 inch MacBook Pro model. So you may want this for a number of different reasons for tasks that require the use of a GPU over a CPU, such as video editing, or maybe just to play the odd game here or there. Now, if that's the case, then by clicking the card in the top right corner, you'll be taken to a video that I have already uploaded to the channel in which I played a number of different games titles on both Mac OS and Windows 10 via bootcamp. Now these games were played at a range of different resolutions. But in short, though you can play a handful, and I stress a handful of titles on this particular model, you most likely not want to do so, as there are many compromises you will have to make, which can take away from the gameplay. So let's talk about the display on the new MacBook Pro. It's an IPS LED display, which has a diagonal screen size of around 13.3 inches, with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. It can also get fairly bright at 500 nits and can display colors in the P3 color spectrum. This display also uses Apple's True Tone technology, which first launched on the 9.7 inch iPad Pro and has since found its way to iPhones and now the MacBook Pro. It uses a number of different sensors to map out the lighting conditions of the environment in which the device is placed and then adapt the temperature of the display accordingly. Now, if your workflow does not depend on seeing colors very accurately, such as photo or video or web development, then you will find True Tone to be quite helpful. But nine times out of 10 in practice, I do have this feature turned off. It also has the same overall design which MacBooks have had for the past four plus years from when they were redesigned back in 2016 with the introduction of the touch bar, though this time it is slightly thicker to accommodate for the redesigned keyboard. More on this in a little. With this MacBook Pro, you get two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports on the left side of the MacBook. Now, while you can do so much with a single port from daisy chaining multiple displays together, connecting multiple hard drives, and also allowing the machine to charge, unlike the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro, the 2020 base 13-inch MacBook Pro will not support the 6K resolution of the XDR display, you will need to look towards the upper tier model with its temp generation processors to accomplish this task. Also, did I mention that I will be getting this model in to review and test over the next coming weeks? 
be sure to subscribe to the channel as you definitely do not want to miss that one. I still stand by this and would have loved to have seen one on either side thus making it easier when you're in an awkward position and have to plug it in to charge but have to run the cable to the other side of the MacBook. The keyboards on the MacBooks personally haven't caused myself any issues butterfly keyboard or not but due to the bad reputation that they had garnered over the past few years Apple have had to revert back to their magic keyboard design from MacBooks of the past. Now if you had a chance to feel the keyboard on the 16 inch MacBook Pro then you know what I mean. I can honestly say that now after using the 16 inch MacBook Pro and the 2020 MacBook Air that I prefer this over the butterfly keyboard but nor have I ever not liked that keyboard. I think that at some point it will make its comeback maybe when Apple start looking into creating their own ARM based MacBook products but either way the extra depth to the key presses is a welcome addition. Talking about the keyboard just above the keyboard you will find the touch bar with touch ID and now finally a physical escape key. Now the thing with the touch bar is you'll either love it or hate it. Myself I find it has more uses than you will think of at first from taking a screenshot with a tap or displaying the desktop to grab that one file in a pinch. It's definitely got its uses for me but like I said you have to adapt your workflow to include it else you'll never use it and in turn think it's useless. The speakers? Well there's not much to say about them in all honesty. They're MacBook speakers which means they sound great so this time they sound very similar to what we had in last year's model though that's not to say they've gotten worse as they clearly haven't. I find it crazy how Apple don't have to improve on something because they were so far ahead in their previous model and it's good enough to compete with what the competitors are still launching today. Yes, they're loud enough. Yes, they have a decent amount of audio separation. And yes, they have a surprisingly good amount of low end. All things considered, they're still great. How great? Well, take a quick listen to this. webcam or as Apple like it to be called the FaceTime HD camera which at this point is laughable how it's still being labelled as HD. Yes I know 720p is standard HD but I've seen competitors which have smaller bezels and high resolution cameras on their laptops and if they're able to you bet your asses that Apple can but for some reason they're yet to do so. Now given the current state of global affairs we currently find ourselves in I think this is the wake up call that Apple have needed. We have great and in most cases industry leading audio with their studio quality microphones and awesome sounding speakers. Now we just need the video footage to follow suit. Right so this is what the FaceTime HD camera on this new MacBook Pro looks like. Now there is a redesigned microphone system within this MacBook Pro so you should also be able to tell that my voice sounds a little more clear when compared to previous models. Now my gripe now is with that FaceTime camera. Now Apple claim it to be FaceTime HD, yes 720p is still technically HD um, but it's okay, it's not good, it's not the best, it's not class leading. Um, considering the kind of speakers, the microphone, keyboard, trackpad, all the other things that we've got in this MacBook Pro, that webcam is seriously dragging it back down. Especially when you factor in that, you know, some of these uh, front cameras that we've had in iPhones for many years are way better than what we've got up there. I believe the last time we had a 720p FaceTime camera on an iPhone was back in the iPhone 4 and 4S days. So yeah, the the technology has clearly matured along the way, but at this at this point, Apple really need to just implement it into their uh, their MacBooks because it's it's laughable. I mean, the competition are coming out with uh, full HD 1080p webcams in their in their Mac, well, their laptops. Um, whereas Apple are adamant they want to stick to 720p. Hopefully we see a 14 inch model and hopefully with that being said we have an upgraded, uh, upgraded camera um, with that new model. So yeah at this point let's see what we, uh, what we end up getting but it really does uh, pull, pull this machine back down uh, to earth. It's a good machine to a degree but this is really dragging it down. 
Going from one of its biggest weaknesses to perhaps its largest strength, the trackpad. The trackpad, in all honesty, is the bread and butter of all MacBooks ever since Apple introduced us to the Force Touch trackpads back in 2015. The glass surface is an amazing and effortless way of interacting with macOS and getting tasks complete, be it scrolling through a document or scrubbing through a video timeline. The trackpad on the MacBook Pro is a massive plus and you honestly have to experience it for yourself and then you'll understand. Talking about macOS, this MacBook Pro comes running macOS Catalina out the box, which enables features such as sidecar and the abilities it will bring when paired up with an iPad running iPad OS. There are also multiple redesigns to applications such as photos and reminders, and with WWDC 2020 less than a month away, these MacBook Pros are honestly going to continue to graciously age with many years of software support. So in short, I think this is a worthy upgrade for anyone who has been holding on to pre-2016 models, which had the HDMI port along with the more traditional USB-A ports, whom have been worried about the butterfly keyboard and the potential issues they may cause. The 40 gigabits per second transfer speeds of Thunderbolt 3, meaning you're able to connect up to two 4K UHD displays running at 60 Hertz, not to mention you get all the benefits of the TTU security chip, which will encrypt the SSD and is responsible for the fingerprint data which is stored on the machine, which is actually a good thing considering the amount of vulnerabilities that have recently been found in Intel's processors. On top of that, you also get the blazingly fast SSDs which are capable of read and write speeds in excess of 2300 megabytes per second. You also get the touch bar, which depending on the way you use it, could make the machine even more versatile and convenient to use. And as I've said, I wish you had a better webcam for the money, as there are a lot of machines which give better video and still image quality. If this is your first time looking into purchasing a MacBook, then I feel you won't be too disappointed by purchasing purchasing this model, but considering how good the third generation butterfly keyboards have been for myself and the zero issues it's caused for me, my family and friends, you might be good looking into last year's model, which has the same processor, RAM, graphics, display and ports. In fact, the biggest reasons as to why you'd most likely look into purchasing the 2020 model is due to the increase in base storage from 128 gigabytes to 256 gigs. Along with this, you also get the new keyboard, not to mention that this alone will mean that the MacBook Pro will hold its value much more than those from 2019 and later. At the end of the day, it's a MacBook, which means great build quality, excellent support, and great software included. A super Superb color accurate display in which you cannot see the individual pixels. These MacBook models can be found on sale and I will leave links down below to where you can purchase them for the cheapest prices. So that will be it for today's video. If you are new around here then be sure to hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell to be notified of when I upload any of my new videos. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, then be sure to hit the thumbs up button. And if you've got any questions with anything you've seen in this video, then be sure to leave them down below in the comment section. Or alternatively, you can hit me up on my social media, links to which can be found down below in the description. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.